All right, what's going on, guys? Let's see if we can get this thing up and running. So just working on getting my live view so I can see the uh, chat as it rolls through. Sweet. So let's get my computer out of frame. There we go. Chico, Eagle Eye. There we go, guys. What's going on? Is the audio good? Can you guys hear me? Eagle Eye. Go back. Go on. Is the audio good? Can you guys hear me? All right. Sounds like we can hear each other. Hey, uh, Kenny, I'm going to be sending you some goodies, which I told you I'd send like a long time ago. So I'm finally going to do it. And you're gonna be looking good in one of these, so we'll get you hooked up. We'll get that shipped out this week. Hopefully, get there early next week. We'll see how that goes. What's going on, Chico? Uh, yeah, so this is 6.5 Creedmoor. Just a heads up. I, I heard or read in uh, Johnny's live chat that uh, you just got your psalm brass, so really excited to see what you come up with on your psalm. But, 100 pieces, brand new ADG brass. Um, I got these right before I pulled the barrel on my 6.5 Creedmoor and turned it into a 6 Creedmoor. So these are no good to me. So I'll check them out, man. What's going on, Idaho Rogers? Um, yeah. So let's see what we got going on. So I've been, I actually moved recently. And I am now in Southern Utah, working for a barrel manufacturer. So that's kind of where I've been as I've been doing a lot of gun stuff and uh, kind of been enjoying just out, hanging out doing stuff besides guns out in the desert, rock crawling and uh, like in Jeeps and stuff, as well as RC crawlers, whatever, just kind of entertaining myself besides rifles however it's finally starting to cool off and the uh the hot temperatures were no fun to shoot in so now that's cooling off i'm really getting the itch to get out shoot far find a good long range that's been one big major thing i've been waiting on is to find a good range to shoot at so hopefully i'll go out and find a new spot to go and get beyond 2200 yards and keep on going as far as that goes but yeah, I mean, pretty open to whatever you guys want to talk about. I got the live chat rolling through here. Um, so we can talk about different cartridges and whatnot, uh, what it's like working for a barrel manufacturer, um, stuff about the uh, how that goes. Visited Salt Lake from Northern Canada this summer. The heat was gross. <laughs> the funny part is Salt Lake really doesn't get that bad. Um, Go another three or four hundred miles south and starts going up pretty quick. What's wild is you go like four hours south of Salt Lake down to southern Utah, northern Arizona, and that goes up like 10 degrees. But if you go from southern Utah just to Las Vegas, just like another two hours, and that's not even south, it's more west. And man, the heat is brutal out there. So, but uh, I'm not jealous of your guys' winters up in Canada. I'm sure those are no fun. Let's see. So I've got my psalm over here. It's sitting in the background. It's got the F-Class bipod on there. I really haven't shot that thing a whole lot. Um, I wish that I had more opportunities to get out and shoot that. But again, I just haven't really had a good range where I could like go shoot super far so I've been kind of waiting to find a good spot I really need to go scouting some more see what I can come up with MGM for the win I have three of their barrels really enjoy your content well thank you sir I greatly appreciate you watching um yeah the MGM stuff is fun what's funny is I was looking for the best groups I'd ever shot uh recently this week on my Instagram I was going through all my groups and whatnot, and the MGM barrels on that single shot uh, Thompson Center Encore was real close to the best 
group that I've ever had. And that was with like bolt actions like this sitting over here. I mean, I've had a bunch of time to shoot those, but getting down behind the Thompson centers, those MGM barrels just shoot. Let's see. Yeah, Eagle Eye's asking about the new Arkin optics. Well, I guess that's something to talk about. So, uh, I've got the new Arkin optics sitting right here. But uh, I'm waiting to like go get a real range trip with this thing before I start like really going off on it. But so far, I'm, I haven't shot it yet. I'm really curious how this will work. Um, basically, if this thing actually tracks like they say it will, this is gonna be the scope to have. So it's a 34 millimeter tube, which is like a big, awesome tube, gonna let a lot of light through, um, collect a lot of light in the large bell objective. On top of being a large objective to let light through, it gives you more room to have more elevation adjustments and windage adjustments because there's a small tube that sits back here and that thing has to move up and down to be able to adjust your scope and where your crosshairs sit. And for long range shooting, elevation adjustment is like super important on a scope. Uh, I'm looking for a bunch of, as much elevation as I can get in any scope I'm looking at. So that's huge, that's awesome. As well as Arkin has a tracking guarantee, um, it is 1% or less error in tracking is what they're guaranteeing these scopes will do, which I don't know of any other scope manufacturer. In fact, I'm quite sure there isn't after talking to Arkin. Um, they're saying that there's no other scope manufacturer that guarantees their tracking. And so this one's first focal plane. I have a four to 16. I think that they just haven't like completely finalized their six to 24, as well as uh, this one's mill. So it's the only mill radian scope I have which doesn't bother me. I mean, I know how it works. Um, this one's mill. I'm pretty sure they're going to have an MOA. Uh, I don't know that for sure yet, but looking online, I'm thinking that they're going to have an MOA scope available in the pretty close future. And once they have MOA and mill unlock, like these things are going to be popping up everywhere if they work. So I'm real excited to get out and see how those work. But uh, yeah, Kenny, you know what you're after. You know what you're looking for. Uh, let's see. Kind of new to the bolt action scene. Love it. Watch your channel and Eagle Eye religiously. Hey, man, I appreciate that. So sounds like you're a Ford guy if you're rocking SBT. Uh, yeah, I would guess a Mustang if I had to guess anything. Let's take a look here. Arkin seems to be getting a lot of attention recently. I think it's because they've reached out to content creators and that's why I have one is they wanted to see what I thought of it. So I'm going to go give this thing some tests, see how it goes. Same with like Rex reviews. I'm sure they reached out to him to see what he thought of it, which is fine. I mean, you got to get your name out there as well as, uh, I think they're going the way, I think they're going the right way about it. They're getting their scopes in long range rifle shooters hands. They're not just going to like, the huge channels that just review everything, which is so tiring. It gets old, but, uh, no, cause I really don't consider myself like a review channel. I like to think of myself more as a demonstrational channel to where like, am I freezing up or is that just my computer? I like to take all my rifles and stuff and go out and show what they're capable of. I don't just like to sit there and review and talk about every little feature. Like, no, I'd rather go show you if it does or doesn't work. And then uh, hitting my target or not is kind of the evidence if it works or not. And so I'm actually going to move this for just a second. Uh, and that was one cool thing about my SOM. I was fortunate enough to be able to work with a couple companies to complete that rifle. And uh, like working with the company is one thing and trying to like hawk their stuff is different. But working with these companies, I was working to achieve a goal and the goal was extremely difficult to where you can't just use BS components. Like I wasn't just going to take anyone who's throwing something at me. Uh, I was very particular about the companies that I worked with and for good reason, because at the end of it, my rifle worked really well and I accomplished the goal. The goal was to shoot 2000 yards 
and to get on target. So I did that, and then I went out and shot 2,200 yards, and it's still working, so I want to continue going out. And uh, anything on top of this is really gravy at this point, so I've really been happy with how that Sean, how that Psalm has shot. Uh, Tika action, preferred barrels, barrel. Um, that one's not the prefit for the Tika, that's a shouldered barrel for the Tika. Um, their preferred barrels muzzle brake on there. Uh, we got a tracked Toric Ultra HD scope manufacturer over there. You can see it 30 millimeter. Um, I didn't use the adjustable IV base that's sitting on there right now, but uh, I've used that on my 22. I have yet to go like try it at long range with my SOM, which is a big reason why I want to get out there and shoot. Um, MDT ESS chassis. Um, that thing's super sweet. I've loved the MDT stuff since I first heard about them. Uh, what else? We got Anarchy Outdoors bolt knob, 30 MOA scope base, bunch of really awesome companies in there. Atlas Development Group with the brass, uh, making Factory 7 SOM. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that, where you just load up a cartridge and go shoot it. So super fun. As well as the brand new SOM brass is like some of the best shooting stuff that I've ever had. That the AEG stuff right out of the box just performs. There's no fire forming like necessary. It just shoots awesome. So let's take a look. Um, all right. I really like an open, open dot reticle really helps for long range. So Kenny, I'll take a peek through here. I'm quite sure. Yeah. So there are, just little tiny dots that create a cross for the first three, I guess three tenths of a mil, or maybe, I don't think it's three mils. No. Yeah, I'd have to double check what all the little measurements are. Again, I'm not a super big mil guy, so I can't glance at something and tell you if they're a tenth of a mil or not. But uh, very fine dots. Uh, they're all open for the first three marks on each one. So I think you're really gonna like one of these Arcton, Arctons if you get a hold of one. Uh, let's take a look here. What range finder are you using on your targets? So I run a mixture. I have a Nikon range finder, which is okay to 700 yards. It can get readings to 1300, which I've seen it do very rarely. It doesn't like it. It gets real picky past 700, but like zero to 700, it's solid. So it'd be a perfectly acceptable uh, hunting range finder, which is like really why I keep it around, is if I go hunting, I need to be able to find the range to the target. But uh, if I'm going out shooting 2000 yards, I have a GPS app on my phone and I can literally say like, I'm going to start at this point and then I just move and it tells me how far I've moved. So it'll tell me that I've gone 2,200 yards, which is also super helpful while you're driving your truck out to where you're gonna shoot. So you can literally just watch your GPS and it counts up in live time. So I can see like, okay, I've crossed over the one mile mark. Now I'm up to 1900 yards, 2000, 2100. Okay, I wanna stop around 2200. And then I can also read the terrain as I'm going to see like, okay, am I at, am I at the bottom of a hill here? Or am I at the top of a hill? Cause I wanna shoot from the top of a hill to have clear vision back to my target. So really helps out um, just that little GPS app which is hilarious because you can get super crazy expensive range finders. And this app was $3 on my phone. And it's like the best range finder for ELR. So I think it's hilarious. And I've compared it side by side to my real range finder. And they're within like one to two yards every time. So I, I really like it. It's worked for me every time. And it gets me real close to my target um, on my first couple shots. So... JCT Outdoors, how's it going, dude? Uh, had an 03 Cobra, wish I still had it. Missed the track, but don't miss the money pit that it was. <laughs> yeah, uh, my dad has a Mustang and I've seen him put some money into that thing. But uh, they're cool cars, uh, especially if you had an SVT. Uh, the Cobras are sweet. Uh, you put out great content, don't always comment, but I've been taking notes and saving videos like crazy. Yeah, Chico, I appreciate that, dude. Uh, I think you you do really awesome as well over on your channel. I like how you're always involved with the community and commenting back and forth with people. Uh, got a great attitude. I follow you on Instagram as well. So always cool to see you in the comments and uh, chatting it up with people. Uh, 
that was a nice scope you just featured. I had the F on Midas TAC. I really like it. Looking for a second scope at the moment. Black Friday deals happening now. Yeah, and that's the downside. I really wanted to get out and try that Arkham before Black Friday, but I got family coming to town. I just don't have time to get out and shoot um, until like Saturday, maybe. So, uh, Red Raider reloading. What's going on? I know Rogers. How did the deer hunt go? I sat at home. I didn't go on my deer hunt. I made a video talking about how I was going to, and then I didn't go. Basically, I had a buddy who was gonna help me. I, I was supposed to drive back up to the to the Wasatch Mountain Range, and I kind of got lazy as well as he was busy working, and I just was unable to make it. So, didn't go on the deer hunt. My rifle sat at home, sad, and so did I. But. He ended up getting a really good looking four point on like the last day of the season on Sunday afternoon, which I definitely wouldn't have been there at that point in time. I would have been heading home, but uh, it was awesome for him. I was a little bit jealous that he got such a good looking four point muley up in uh, the Wasatch Mountains, but it is what it is. Uh, maybe next year, I really want to go out and get after an elk or, uh, or really an uh, antelope. I want to go get a speed goat really bad. Those things are so cool. Uh, especially because it's like on home turf, just out in the desert, shooting long range. I'd love to go get like a six to 800 yard shot on an antelope. And depending on where it's at and how accessible it is, I might even take the SOM just because that thing is such a hammer and a longer range, might as well bring something more powerful. What GPS app is it? It's called Tape Measure. It's real simple. Uh, if you guys have ever watched Mark and Sam after work, uh, that's what they use. That little tape measure app. They haven't mentioned it in a long time, but uh, all their earlier stuff is tape measure. Uh, it's on iOS. I don't know if you can get it for Android. Try and find like a little GPS measuring app, see what you can come up with. Whew. Are those aluminum chassis cold to hold in poor weather? Uh, definitely, they can get cold. But I mean like an AR-15, you got an aluminum rail on there. So like your, your rail on your AR-15 is gonna get cold as well. So, I mean, the most parts you interface with, like the grip, uh, I've got a rubber grip here. The one on my SOM is plastic. Uh, the butt stock on your AR is plastic. These have uh, plastic cheek pads and rubber butt pads. So, I mean, they're really not too cold because I'm not, carrying them with what I do. Um, I mean, you could just wear a glove. That might help a lot. So I'd suggest doing that, but uh, it's bearable. It depends on just how cold it is where you're at. So JCT Outdoors says I can only shoot 120 yards where I live, but like to go shoot 22 LR back there in five to 10 mile per hour wind it makes it way more fun. Absolutely, man. I love shooting my 22 a couple hundred yards, even if I have access to like way far out. So 22 LR is where it's at. It's tons of fun. What velocity did you get out of the 95 grain SMKs in that Valkyrie? Ooh. Let's see if we've got that written down right here. Um, so, burger. Oh, it's my AR Valkyrie 75 grain. I'm thinking that I'm not going to have it. No, it's not in here. So I think it was 26, something like that. 2600 FPS. Sorry, man, I don't have an exact number off the top of my head. I haven't shot my Valkyrie in a while. Uh, I took it apart to shoot my, yeah, I took it apart to go shoot my 6.5 Grendel. And then my Grendel had a few issues and then I've got that fixed and I'm kind of just waiting to get out with it, which is what I've been flashing back and forth. This is my Grendel. So I got the new scope on here. I've got the new upper for the Grendel and then I've got my new brake for my can, which I should be getting in the next year or whenever the government decides that They've had my money for long enough. So, uh, yeah, excited to go shoot the Grendel. I want to shoot that side by side with the Valkyrie. And then uh, I need to get my 223, a new barrel. The one that's in it right now just kind of 
had them in performing like I wanted it to. So let's see here. Uh, Red Raider reloading is working. Idaho Rogers is uh, looking a little sad. OCD Outdoors is going on. If you ever find yourself in Alberta in November, I'll take you deer hunting. Sounds good. Appreciate that, G. Lewis. Uh, looks like you changed your picture there. I don't know if I'll ever be in Alberta in November. Maybe July. Maybe. But I'd like to get up north a little bit. That sounds fun. Go up into the forest. Just get away from everyone. Uh, hitting Steel CA. Howdy, people. What's going on, dude? Not available on Android. I asked Mark about it on a video. I use GPS rangefinder for Android. Is normally for golf. There you go. And what's funny is I think uh, rangefinders like had a huge stride in the civilian market from golfing. I think that's where like it really started to. They really wanted like a good accurate rangefinder, and then the shooters were like, "Hey, this technology is useful. We'll make it better." And now I've got like the stabilized 4K rangefinders. I've used the Vortex, oh man, what is it? Is it the 5000 HD or something like that? I've used that for my work. Uh, they're really cool and they work really well. They like offhand point and click, like 2,500 yards on a range, just offhand. It's ridiculous. That's crazy good. So it's really awesome. Uh, 2,600 FPS, thanks for W. Yeah, man, that's a rough estimate. It might not be exact. Uh, I should say it in one of my videos, so let's see. I really like that you went to upper. Those are so sweet. If I only had the cash to buy, uh, keep your eyes peeled. They might be running a deal, whether it's just uh, involved, includes one of their triggers or uh, maybe percentages off of their accessories available online. I would not be surprised at all if you precision is running something uh, this coming Black Friday. And yeah, man, I've had multiple, those guys up there, it's a really small shop who run it and they're literally handmade custom barreled actions that pin right onto your AR. Like they shoot awesome. And I mean, I've, I've tried to demonstrate time and time again that like just how they actually perform well. But uh, I really like the guys up at UNA. Like you got uh, Baker up there. I think he's taking care of most of the customer service now. And then you got Richard and Jason, like all super good dudes. So UNA Precision's awesome. I highly recommend picking one up if you have the means to do so. But I also do understand like that is an expensive upper for an AR. But when you compare it to just the custom action alone, like a Kelbley's Atlas Tactical or a Bighorn Origin, like you're a thousand dollars into just the bolt action. And with these, you're getting the bolt action, a barrel, which is like a high performance match grade barrel, and then a handguard as well. And it's compatible with your AR-15. Last round bolt hold, hold open, stuff like that. So it's a really cool feature set depending if you already have an AR built up, I mean, you could literally be saving money because once you get your custom action, man, you gotta get a chassis for it, which is $700 or so. You can get a, a fiberglass stock. Those are $1,000, crazy inlets. You gotta get bottom metal, triggers, scope base. Like, oh, that's another thing that's included on these is uh, you don't need to buy a scope base because it's flat top AR right here. Or on the AR-10 version, it's 20 MOA built in. Um, speaking of 20 MOA, on this Arcan Optic, I do have a Burris Pepper in the 34 millimeter rings, and this has 20 MOA built in, which will be quite helpful for the 6.5 Grendel. So throw that out there while I've got it up. You guys like how I just keep pulling my Grendel out of nowhere? That's fun. <laughs> uh, let's see, 6.5 Creedmoor, what grain bullet did you have best results with? I shot the 140 grain Barnes bullets and the 147 grain Hornady ELDMs. And I shot those through an electronic target at an F-class match. And I shot one string of 20 rounds, like through all the different wind and stuff. And uh, I did it with my 147s first and then my 140s after that. And the 140s shot a better group at 600 yards through a 20 round string. And I had spent a lot of time doing load development on each one of those. Both of those should be getting well below 10 feet a second standard deviations. Uh, both were way less than sub MOA. And uh, yeah, both those bullets shot really well for me. 
140s you can get a little bit more speed out of the 147s you're going to cut through the wind a little bit better so it depends on how far you're shooting that will dictate which one is better than the other let's take a look here love my upr and 6.5 rental i really just haven't had time to get out and fall in love with mine yet man i just haven't shot it enough i've had it for like a year and i've only shot like 40 rounds out of it it's sad i need to go shoot this damn thing those uppers were the first thing I looked at. I had the same mindset to be able to swap back and forth to regular AR uppers. And that's a really cool aspect of them. Swap out your upper, it's semi-auto. Name one other precision rifle that can do that. So really cool stuff. You still doing anything with 224 Valkyrie? Absolutely, got everything I need for it, but it's just kind of been on the back burner. I've been trying to get my Grendel up and running. So the uh, 224 Valkyrie's kind of just been hanging out. Hasn't had the I went and shot it a couple times, like kind of accomplished what I wanted to do, proving that you could shoot the 95 grains with a one to seven twist accurately. Uh, I made a promotional video with it, had some fun, and it's a super fun cartridge. You can shoot that thing all day long, and it's got similar trajectory to like a 6.5 Creedmoor with no recoil. You put a brake on it, those things don't even move when you shoot, and they're super affordable, so really good time. Let's see. Corey says, okay, so what did Corey say? Oh, okay. <laughs> We're all just here to see Mrs. WDS. Uh, yeah, Ms. WDS is a hell of a shot. And then he says, maybe a better shot than me. So you know what? If my wife can outshoot me, I'm 100% on board with that. If I'm the worst shooter in my house, I am perfectly fine with that. So... Can't complain there. I'm happy anytime she gets down behind the rifle. It's always fun. I uh, like trying to help her learn so she can get out and shoot long range as well. Um, what are your thoughts on the Diamondback Tactical for 223 Wild and semi long range shooting? Well, let's swap out these rifles I got sitting here. Ugh. I'll set this guy here and Hopefully it won't fall off in a dramatic effect in a little bit, but we'll find out. So this is my Diamondback Tactical. Uh, this one is the 4 to 16. I went with 4 to 16 because I anticipated using this one for like coyote hunting. Um, and when I went out the first time of coyote hunting, I was I had a 6 to 24. And 6 power is just a little bit much to kind of be like scanning terrain at 200 yards. So uh, I like the more open field of view at four power, as well as I'm rarely shooting on more than 16X. So really like you get the best view of your reticle on 16X. So uh, it's also cheaper and like what's wrong with cheaper and all the performance that you need. So this is my old TK 22. Yes, this is a 22 long rifle, which I think is hilarious. Um, the funniest part about this is like my mom really likes this gun. So she's always bugging me that I need to build her one, which I do. So <laughs> but yeah, Diamondback Tactical. Um, so far it's worked for me pretty well. Um, it's done It's done a couple weird things where like it's just had like a, a two MOA shift in zero for some reason, I don't know why. But uh, it's a good scope. I like how simple it is. The turrets, yeah, they're a little mushy. They're not quite as crisp, but you know what? It's a more affordable optic. Uh, it is 30 millimeter. It does have a lot of adjustment for elevation. So like you can dial it way up to shoot far out. So that's always a solid plus. But uh, just the biggest thing about this, it's first focal plane and it's got a good radical in it for a good price. So as a budget optic, Diamondback Tactical, I, could, I would definitely say pick one up if this is what you can afford. Um, this is a good optic if you're a little bit uh, limited on budget. So, and I know that 350 bucks isn't, cheap for a scope but uh it depends on com what you're comparing it to if you're going to walmart looking at scopes this is expensive if you're uh, browsing through schmidt and bender's website this is cheap so you just gotta kind of see it from all angles but uh fun fact i did thread this 22 lr barrel 5 8 24 so when i get my suppressor back um i guess when i get my suppressor I can just throw the muzzle device on there and then I can run my suppressor on my 22 LR as well. So really looking forward to that because suppressed 22 is 
some of the most stupid fun that you can have just a, like literally a silent gun. So a, a silencer on a 22 is actually a silencer and then a silencer on another center fire is a suppressor. So there you go. And then this one's the MDT uh, LSS rimfire chassis. Hey, there we go. That's a good bridge point. MDT is having a Black Friday sale. You can find screaming deals on MDT stuff coming up. I think it's Thursday at 3 p.m. or something. Uh, check Modular Driven Technologies website or get signed up for their email chain or see find them on Instagram to find the deals on chassis like this because these are extremely nice and it is very rare that you'll find one on sale. So this is like the one time. If you're going to get a chassis, check out MDT this Friday. I believe that uh, XLR might be having a sale too, so be sure to check those guys out. But I've been real impressed with the quality of the MBTs, like just super awesome, really nice, um, good stuff. This is a prototype barrel from my work that uh, is hexagon fluted and then uh, Cerakoted down in the flutes, and then it's polished. Um, I believe that guy at my work was saying that hopefully we'll be doing uh, like production barrels this spring on the Tikas. So we'll see how it goes. Um, we have had some interest, which is good, which is basically like a drill really helps. So I appreciate you guys watching. That's definitely a big plus there. All right. Which barns? So this is referring to the 6.5 Creedmoor, which, uh, which bullets that I shoot. So they were the barns match burners. So they're gonna look like this. They're in a black box, kind of like yellowish, brownish color, whatever. But uh, they were six. They were six point five millimeter, one forty grain. I think the BC on them was five forty. Which I, the reason I picked the Barnes match burners was because they were not the best BC. I wanted to see like if a lower BC bullet just shot better, and they performed. Pretty dang good, and these are affordable. Uh, you should definitely check out Barnes Match Burners if you're just looking for a good, fun bullet to shoot. Uh, these are six millimeters, and these are the 112 grains. Uh, this is what I'm using in my six millimeter Creedmoor, which is that guy sitting in front, the all black one sitting up here, standing up. So that's what I'm using in that. Uh, my six Creedmoor is the 112 grain Barnes Match Burners. And uh, so far, having good luck with those. Um, I haven't shot enough groups with them to really like, I haven't shot any groups with them. I just did a Saturday load development, got them up to the velocity as I was looking for and was just going to go hunting with those. <laughs> All right. So Dan Cole says, my wife just discovered how fun it is to shoot the 44 mag lever gun. <laughs> yeah. You might be in trouble with the 44 mag. Those uh, are not cheap to feed. Uh, get some cast lead bullets, do some 44 special loads, which will be even more fun to shoot. So that's my advice there. Uh, did you chamber and make that seven psalm barrel y'all sent over? I need excuse. I need an excuse if I can't hit my mark. Um, no, they don't let me ruin barrels in my work. So, the uh, the guys over there dialed that thing into uh, less than three ten thousandths to the bore, and then they uh, is is it radially, and then yeah they dial it in radially, and then there's another one that I see the name escapes me right now, but. They dialed that thing in. They put a seven psalm chamber that's going to be real similar to that. And mine works really well. So yours should also work really well. But uh, yeah, let us know how that goes. Um, that barrel looks awesome. Thank you. I, I'm thinking you're talking about that 22. Uh, yeah, MDT also has a really nice stock for the Uinta guys. Absolutely. That's one of my favorite things about the Uintas. Not the Uintas, the MDTs. Um, so this one's their more simplified version, but they're just super adjustable. Uh, you got your cheek piece on here, you got your shoulder pad. This one's got spacers you can add in for length of pull, but I added a folder, which adds like an inch of length of pull. So this thing's got a crazy long length of pull as it is. So I took all my spacers out, but the song, which is buried over there, uh, the butt pad can raise up, down. You can tilt the whole thing side to side. And you can also move the butt pad like left or right of center. So you can literally shift it over. So like the way I set up my stock on that thing is I would lay down and I would work 
one piece at a time until like it just felt perfect. And then you just go through the whole, all the adjustments on the stock. And I got that thing to fit me, dude. So that thing is like a glove. I love shooting my saw because it's so comfortable. And it just, I lay down behind it and ooh, I'm right at home, ready to start shooting. So preferred barrels are extremely high quality. Bore cam shows mirror finish. Thank you, Eagle Eye. Uh, yeah, uh, Corey also has a bore cam on here. So he just got his barrel, which is, it looks like this. It's polished with black hex fluting, but his is in an AR-10. And he went with a, like an inch 06 straight taper barrel. He's got a great big barrel on that thing, but Corey's out there shooting past 2000 yards with a 6.5 Creedmoor. So uh, excited to see more content from him in the future. Uh, I know he's working on getting that barrel broke in, uh, wondering if he's gonna shoot the uh, tubs bullets through there or not. So we'll see how that goes. <sighs> Scott Forning says, I've been using 140 Nosler in my 260s. The reduced drag friction bullet works well for me. Very, works well for me. BC is very high, running a Baldata 3 to 18 on Okay, running a Baldata 3x18 on one night force. I think he's saying a 3 to 18 power scope on one piece night force rings, maybe, on a Remington Precision chassis rifle on the other. Oh, okay, Baldata on one rifle and a night force on a Remington Precision chassis rifle on the other. Okay. Yeah, man, those both sounds like really sweet shit. Really sweet setups. So, uh, Red Raider Reloading says he shot the 127 grain LRX. I just don't need the terminal effects of the uh, of the LRX, which are like the Barnes hunting bullets. And the Barnes hunting bullets are on the expensive side, whereas their match bullets are really affordable. They put their time and technology into their hunting bullets, so they're going to cost a little bit more. Let's see, which MDT for Uinta? Uh, I know that he runs a skeleton on his, which I forgot to mention. This MDT stock is the Skeleton Light. They have three versions. This one's like the mid-grade. And uh, the Skeleton's the higher end one. Uh, it's got more adjustability in the butt pad. And uh, I intentionally just wanted to try this one out because I already had the real Skeleton stock on my, on my ESS over there. So just want to try something else out, see how it goes. So I can kind of tell you guys my opinions on both of them. Just hopped on, are you guys doing a Black Friday sale? Well, uh, I don't run a company, so I am not doing a Black Friday sale. However, the, uh, the guys I work for, I literally haven't heard if we're doing a Black Friday sale or not yet. And like, I was asking them the other day and I think it's funny that I still don't know, so. Our internet guy's coming in tomorrow, and that will be the point where we're like, all right, are we going to put stuff on sale or not? So we'll see. We're still pretty swamped after moving, so. Chance Vaughn, what ammo do you use in your Tika T1X? Or what rim thickness does your gun like? I have not tried to measure different rim thicknesses. Uh, I've shot SK in it. I've shot Remington Club, which is made by Ely. I've shot some Ely through it, uh, CCI standard velocity. That stuff's cheap and just shoots good. Like I like the CCI stuff. Uh, the guys at my work run SK, so I may start running that a little bit more, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm not exactly sure what this one loves yet. I haven't even run any of them over the chronograph. I don't know what speed I'm at, but what's funny is I took my Ballistic AE app and just, you can choose from loads, which I do for the 22 LR. So I just chose like, the CCI standard velocity. And then it's like, well, it should give you this velocity. So I just took that exact number that they gave me and shot 500 yards and it was like almost dead on. So it's kind of funny. Uh, that ballistic AE app is pretty awesome. I like it. It's got me way closer to my targets than like how I used to try and print out my ballistic charts, which is a crappy way to do it. So, okay. Corey saying on his MDT, uh, he does the carbine stock, uh, the expensive one. I forgot the name of it. 
Yeah, it should be the skeleton, which is what he's saying. That's it. Um, okay, SBT. Not sure if you shot them. Have you had any first experience with the A tips? I already have two solid 6.5 loads for the 140 ELDs on the fence about trying the A tips. I haven't shot the A tips. There's the 153 grain and then the 135. I don't own a 6.5. I don't own a 6.5 caliber rifle right now, so I've always been more drawn towards 135s. Higher BCs, lighter weight, faster velocity. That sounds like an awesome combination right there. The 153, is it the 153s? I'm pretty sure. 150 something. And uh, uh, yeah, you're just going to lose velocity with those. You're going to have to go a long ways before it starts to like the arc is superior on the 150 plus grain. So I like the 135s. I think the zero to a thousand yards, the 135 is probably better, but you'd have to run a chart and find out. Um, they did announce that they're doing a 185 grain on the seven mil. And for how much I shoot it, I could probably justify doing the A tips in there. So maybe in the future we'll see that, but so far I'm still liking the Sierras. There was a super weird shift in like the base to ogive measurement on just the bullets and uh on my two on my 2200 yard trip it about ruined my trip because like just the bullet shape was different and it really changed how my rifle was shooting so i don't know svt saying yes to the 135s but have you guys had a chance to check out that uh loophole video that I did. I'm curious what your guys' feedback was on that. I'm um, wondering if you guys want me to do more videos that style, because what I do there is I actually like wrote down a script and then I did a voiceover of essentially a written article. And so you don't have to read it, you can just hear what I would have written down. And so it's, it takes out of the hums and haws and it really condenses the information. I could be a little more eloquent with what I'm trying to say and uh, I hope that you guys like those. But uh, yeah, John's saying you should specify preferred barrel blanks. I bought a box of 135 A tips for my 264 Win Mag, but probably won't be till spring before he can load any up. That would be an awesome cartridge to see those 135s come out. Those things are going to be ripping. And uh, hopefully, you can get those close to the lands with the rifle you got. Definitely be curious to see how that goes for you. Uh, SVT says great vib keep doing them for sure and again it that won't be like in every single video I do but on the occasion that I do want to do uh, more of a review style then yeah that's kind of what I'm gonna hopefully accomplish uh, Leupold was very generous in uh, sponsoring me that scope so I wanted wanted to make sure that I gave them a proper thank you by giving them like a really good a well done review uh, didn't necessarily have to be a good review of the optic as i pointed out in one of those uh, there's one detail in there that isn't my favorite but it's a pretty small thing like outside of that that scope's freaking sweet it's lightweight it's large 5 to 25 it'll get stuff done and uh, it definitely helped us get our solid finish place our solid a solid finish in the vortex extreme competition which if we tilt the camera up yeah, that's our race number right there. So I have that pinned up on the wall just because I enjoy looking at it. But I'm hoping next year we get a better, I'm hoping next year we push it harder and uh, do even better than we did this year. So we'll see how that goes. The title said Leopold. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I knew I couldn't afford it. It was great vid, though. Yeah, thanks, Rodgers. Um, yeah, man, I totally get it. I know that there's a lot of stuff that I do that uh, is not it's not real cheap stuff, but, I mean, for the people who are going to be spending that amount of money on it, I would definitely want some content out there when if I'm about to drop $2,300 on a scope. So I'm hoping that helps out people who are thinking about picking one up or uh, even just spreading, like, the loophole has a tactical scope because like if you would have asked me two years ago like hey man what do you think of loophole scope like i wouldn't have cared i been like eh, go to vortex but no that thing's pretty solid that's a 
that's a really well-made optic, really nice and lightweight. And uh, my shooting teammate, Riley, uh, he works He works for a uh, review place, and he just got a hold of the 3 to 18 or 3 to 16 on the loop hold. It's the Mark, I don't even know, I think it's a Mark 5, 3 to 18. It's 10 ounces lighter than this. This thing is already like a featherweight compared to even my 30 millimeter scope sitting over here. And if you shave 10 ounces off that, that's a serious like sheep killing scope right there. Super high quality, lightweight, good glass, solid tracking. That's an awesome scope to go hunt with. So if you putting up the time and investment to go on a crazy hunt like that, uh, a nice piece of glass is worth it. So yeah. Uh, Let's jump around to some cartridges that I'm thinking about uh, picking up. It's kind of funny, I was just thinking about it today. I've got the Grindle, which is the same bolt face as the 22 PPC and the 7.6239. I think a UPR 15 and a 7.6239 would be really fun. The question is, do I want to do like a 308 bore diameter so I can shoot the 308 match bullets and then just have like a cheap little blaster round? But if I have to reload 308 cartridges, I wouldn't be able to shoot the 311 like military ammo out of it. So I don't know what I'd want to do there. Um, you could do a 22 PPC or a 6 PPC, which would be a crazy accurate little cartridge. But you'd want to get some solid reloading dice for those so that like everything's super straight and in line and works really well. Um, just kind of some fun ideas tossing around in my head. I definitely want to do a 300 blackout soon. Uh, because I've got that can coming in the next 10 months or so. So I need something that'll be real quiet. But I've got this Tika sitting over here. It is a long action with a Magnum bolt face. And I'm really considering doing a 300 PRC or a 6.5 PRC. Now they're quite different cartridges. One of them is a short action, like Magnum cartridge. The other one's a long action Magnum cartridge. The 300 PRC does not fit in the MDT mags. Uh, I tried one and the factory stuff is too long for the, for the magazine. So I would have to single feed if I did a 300 PRC barrel. Um, the 6.5 PRC is basically a 6.5 SOM, but Obviously it's gonna have a couple of slight differences. Um, but man, after shooting one, really fun, really accurate, solid, solid factory ammo on 6.5 PRC. So that's kind of tempting. And then at that point, I would head a 6.5 cartridge again, which I really like the bullet selection on 6.5. Uh, and that's gonna have enough powder that you could push the 156 grain burgers, the 153 A-tips, or the 150 grain Sierras, and a 135 Hornady would come screaming out of a 6.5 PRC, so that'd be a lot of fun there. Uh, let's see, get the 3.85 length mags. Let me grab this mag out of my UN, out of my Tika, and I'll see what it says on it, because the chassis is as long as it is. Uh, where is my magazine? One second, guys. Gotta find the magazine. Um, I don't know. Yep. So I don't know where my magazine ended up for my TK. Probably my ammo shelf down here. I bet it's in my rifle case. Yeah. Not in my ammo box either. But, uh, what do you think of the 6.5 PRC? So, after shooting my, you went to Precision 6.5 Creedmoor, doing like as much load development as extensive as I really wanted to get multiple experience experiments and doing different things with it. Like I was able to get, uh, I was able to get some rounds at hundred yards to group at 0.29 MOA. 
And that's not saying you couldn't do better. That's just what I could do with my reloads. And uh, I shot the 6.5 PRC out of a single shot Thompson Center with factory ammo. And so like every single shot, you're breaking your position. You gotta get up off the rifle, you gotta crack it open, pull it out, drop the new one in, lock it back up, get settled back down, get it on your rest. I shot a freaking 0.3 inch group at 100 yards. So like 0.01 off of my best group I've ever shot with a single shot rifle with factory ammo compared to like my precision rifle sitting right there, which says volumes about the MGM barrels. Like that's awesome. And it's really cool that people can do that with that platform. But uh, yeah, that 6.5 PRC really impressed me as well as it's a better option for hunting and long range shooting because it's faster. So it's gonna have a flatter trajectory as well as hit whatever it hits harder. So if you give me the option between a 6.5 Creedmoor or PRC on a hunting trip, give me the PRC, I'd rather have that. They sell 143 grain ELDX precision hunter ammo. Done, throw that in the gun, go shoot it, shoots awesome. Yeah, the, uh, the precision hunter shot 0.33 at 100 and the uh, 147 match shot 0.30. So real close. And that was bad mirage out in the northern Arizona desert. Like the 6.5 PRC has really kind of won me over. And since it fits in my magazine, uh, maybe at some point in the future, I'll pick up a 6.5 PRC for that. That'd be fun. I'd probably do a lighter weight barrel, make my gun a little more maneuverable, maybe even get it out to a PRS match as the uh, 6.5 PRC. Just right now, it's got a long barrel. It's really heavy. Um, not my favorite if i because i have people call and ask me what i think of it at work um i i would say minimum 22 inch length barrel 24 inch is probably the sweet spot and 26 you're going to get more performance um so i would probably do ooh, i probably do a 22 inch barrel and like a little bit lighter profile than what i have now just because i've already got a 26 inch psalm so just having something to switch it up and like actually be like a significant difference would be nice. Um, it'd be better for competition, a little bit shorter, as well as again, once I get my can, uh, it's a long can and uh, it'd be nicer to have a little bit shorter overall length. So talking about this can and whatnot, uh, you guys saw that video I did with OSS suppressors. Really impressed with those things and uh, I was able to get one. So it is the OSS, uh, what is it? It's the Helix Titanium Magnum. And what's really cool about OSS suppressors, I genuinely feel that they were the like only ones doing something different for suppressors. All these companies are like, oh yeah, well ours are different and ours are the quietest metering and blah, blah, blah. OSS, I've been out there and shot them with a 6.5 Creedmoor AR-10 and then that 338 whatever you want to call it. Like it's an AR platform. It looks like a big monster AR shoots 338 Lapua. And, uh, at, at the ear, no earplugs with their can on there, like crazy quiet. Sounded so awesome. I really enjoyed shooting their cans, no gas in your face, even with like a 90 grain powder charge of the 338 Lapua. It was quiet and no gas in my face. So super cool. Um, same with the 6.5 Creedmoor rifle that they brought out from Sword International. Um, those are really nice rifles, by the way. If you guys ever have the chance to check those out, check them out. They're really sweet. Um, but those are super high-end ARs, just uh, so you're aware. Um, but yeah, the OSS I'm getting, it's the Magnum version. So it's a 338 bore, so I can get up to a 338 caliber. It is not the same 338 that I shot in that video. That one's specifically built like for 416 large, like like really big calibers, like 338 Lapua Magnum, obviously. Um, and then it's actually got a bore diameter of like, I don't remember if it was 416 or not, but you can also shoot 375 Shaytac through it. Uh, you can shoot the big rounds through it, but it was a very large can because the larger cartridge you get, creates more gases and you need to be able to cool those and that's what keeps it quieter. So I went with a slightly smaller version because I knew I had a short mag, uh, I had a short mag here. Um, I knew that potentially I'd get a 338 Lapua in the future, uh, maybe a 
it's 300 PRC, whatever. So I wanted a large volume to help cool those gases as well as it's more, a larger can is always more effective than a smaller can. It's just the way it is, more volume to help cool off those gases and make it quieter. So it'll be ridiculously quiet on like 300 blackouts. But uh, the other really cool part is that the OSS, all they've engineered it to do is to not create any back pressure. Basically the gases flow in and they go out and then they get directed backwards and then they get directed back out the front of the can. And it's different than just the baffles, which are like a muffler. Like it just goes through little ports and slowly breaks down the gas and cools them off. The OSS does something completely different and it swirls the gases around. It does a bunch of crazy stuff. I don't even understand. But uh, um, yeah, so it doesn't shoot gas back in your face with semi-auto. So super cool. Um, and once I get that, I want to get an AK just because those are notoriously hard to suppress. And with an OSS, throw it on there, shoot it. Hopefully there'll be no problems. We'll find out. But uh, I don't anticipate having any. So a suppressed AK sounds like a crazy amount of fun. Um, we'll see how that goes. So let's see, 300 blackouts, really fun. That was uh, the first build. And the first thing I learned to reload, have a can for it too, talk about it quiet. Yeah, man, 300 black, I definitely got to get one of those. I think any can owner should own a 300 blackout. Like that should be almost mandatory. Um, yeah, get the 3.85 length mags. I don't think I can with my chassis. What do you think of 6.5 PRC? What's your opinion on 6 versus 6.5 Creedmoor? So, I've owned both now. 6 Creedmoor, it's a faster shooting cartridge. You're shooting a lighter bullet. So for hunting, go with the 6.5. Um, for target shooting, the 6 millimeter is going to be beneficial. As well as when uh, when I did the Vortex Extreme, you had to carry your own ammo and be self-sufficient self through the whole day. Uh, 80 rounds of 6 millimeter Creedmoor is significantly lighter than 6.5 Creedmoor. So that was one of the reasons we did that. As well as just a faster, flatter trajectory. The 6.5 is going to have a way longer barrel life. Um, people have complained about 243s having short barrel lives. Uh, it's real similar to a 243. Here's the biggest advantage of the 6 Creedmoor over the 243 and why the 6 Creedmoor will absolutely continue to grow and dominate over the 243 now. Twist rate. 6 millimeter Creedmoor has been standardized with a 1 to 8 twist rate. You can shoot the target bullets. 243, everyone is still stuck on one to 10 for no reason. So get a six millimeter Creedmoor absolutely over a 243. Um, if you're hunting, go 6.5. If you're just target shooting, want to have fun, PRS, six mil Creedmoor. That's my breakdown of it. Um, both have awesome factory ammo available. Let's see. Would you still go with the 6 Creedmoor over the Dasher after your testing and comparisons we did? So he's referring to the preferred barrel blanks video that uh, we actually shot a 6x47 Lapua, a 6 Creedmoor, and a 6 Dasher against each other. Man, that Dasher is just fun. Uh, we could use different powders to get it going faster and probably get it competitive with the Lapua, but uh, you're not going to catch the Creedmoor. The Creedmoor is just faster. The uh, barrel life will be shorter on the Creedmoor than a Dasher or a Lapua. So you gotta weigh out what you want. The highest hit ratio we had was with the Creedmoor. So if you're shooting competition and like you're really serious about it, the Creedmoor is the beneficial one to go with. It's just kind of what we found in our own testing. Big Al says we can only dream of cans where I live. Uh, that's unfortunate, man. It's almost getting that point where I'm at. I think it's so funny that like England has some of the most stringent gun laws there are, but they can go buy a can just like they can a rifle. I do not understand why it is not the same way here. That's where that's where I'll get off the high horse. We've all heard it. We all agree. We want our cans. I think everybody should be able to get one. It's it's polite. It's nice to have those. You know, you don't want to bother your neighbors. Uh, next for me might be the 6GT. You know, I haven't really done enough research into it. 
I know that it falls somewhere real close between the 6x47 Lapua and the 6 Creed more. I think it's right in between those two. I don't know the huge draw for it when the Creedmoor is faster. At least that's my understanding. If it's faster than the Creedmoor, okay, I get it. Yeah, it's a little bit quicker, makes sense, gives you a competitive edge. But I mean, like, starting up a new cartridge like that, where it's so, like, PRS niche, it's going to be difficult to get high quality components for a little while. I'm sure the guys will catch on and start making it, but then you got to wait for the new dies. Um, I know that it's, I know that's difficult to get a reamer and a set of gauges because I've tried to do that for my work. And uh, yeah, I don't know, the 6GT just haven't done enough homework on it. I don't really care, but I have a 6 Creed more sitting right there. So I don't really care to have a dasher either. Just kind of how it is. Uh, waiting for more options on dies. See, that's exactly what I mean. So, uh, but I don't doubt that it'll be a very accurate cartridge and shoot well. The, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, George Gardner designed it. That guy makes really good shooting rifles. So if he designed a cartridge to shoot well, I don't doubt it at all. So here we go. We got Riley Baxter in the comments. He's uh, the dude who went with me for the Vortex Extreme. And he says, Logan, repeat after, repeat this after me. Everybody needs a 338. But after seeing his video where he goes out and uh, harvests an elk at over 1,000 yards with his 338 and just hammers that thing and it goes 10 feet and then it takes a nap, um, I kind of can't disagree there. Uh, but like Riley, I don't agree that the 338 Lapua is this ultimate end all cartridge. Um, I think if I, I don't know, man, because the 338 Edge, well, yeah, I've got brass with loaded bullets in there. Let's take a look at these. Uh, hopefully, my 22 doesn't fall over. Yeah. So, being friends with Atlas Development Group, I asked if they would be polite enough to send over um, every type of cartridge of brass that they make. And then I put some rounds in there just to make some dummy rounds. So why don't we take a look at 338 Edge versus 338 Ultra Mag and 338 Lapua. So 338 Ultra Mag, right there. This is 338 Lapua Mag, because it's got a big fat butt, it's easy to spot. Just for reference, this is a 375 Ultra Mag with a 400 grain solid in there. This thing's got a BC of over, over one. So like people are like, oh, I got a 675. This is a 1.0 whatever. Crazy high BC on that thing. Um, yeah, 300 Win Mag, 300 Ultra Mag. Those are both solids. Uh, let's take a look. 7 WSM. That's not even 80 G brass. Get out of here. Uh, 6 Creed more. There's a cute little 6 Creed more. That's 243. Not even 80 G brass. Apparently, all my dummy rounds fell in their way in here. Get out of here, 308. Nobody likes you anymore. There we go. All right, guys. A good topic. Let's adjust down here. So we got the Lapua, and I can't even tell because they're so damn similar. Edge, Ultra Mag. So very, very similar. And if I remember right, the 300 Ultra Mag is the same case length as the 338 Edge. The, uh, the 338 Ultra Mag has a shorter overall length. So all they did was take the 300, 338 Ultra Mag and make it the length of the 300 Ultra Mag, and that's where the 338 Edge came from. So at least that's my stupid basic understanding of it. And you have a 338 Lapua. So skinnier 
at the base. This one uses a magnum volt face, long action caliber. That, that didn't make any sense. Long action uh, action. And then this one uses a Lapua bolt face, long action. The actions for the Lapuas are inherently more expensive because you say Lapua and people charge you more. So this guy, it's gonna be more affordable and easier to find an action for. However, the 338 edge is a really long overall length. Like it's taller than the Lapua is. And these aren't set to real lengths. I just kind of set them all to a basic, like stretched out long kind of length. But uh, yeah, 338 Ultra Mag, 300 Ultra Mag, and you got 338 Edge and 338 Lapua. So let's take a look here. They shortened the 338 run to fit the loaded cartridge in a standard long action mag. Had to order in to fit it and the longer 338 bullets compared to the other rum calibers. So Riley's basically backing me up on what I'm saying there. Uh, just kind of how they came up with that. Um, another cartridge, so like uh, another weird one that I don't quite understand why it got so popular is 28 Nosler when seven rum is a thing. And those are crazy similar as well. They're both long, tall, skinny guys like this. And they shoot seven millimeter bullets stupid fast and they use a lot of powder to do it. When uh, the little short action ultra mags, man, they're so freaking efficient. So here's a 6.5 SOM. Isn't it funny how they look so dang tiny? Like a 6.5 SOM is pretty serious round and then you put it next to a Lapua. I think that's where most of the draw comes from for the Lapua stuff is like, they're just big. And so it's easy to be like, oh, this one's powerful, but look how powerful the 338 Lapua is. And I think that's mostly what it is. And I've just not been on that bandwagon. But uh, like my seven Psalm will outrun a Lapua for the entire ballistics trajectory. However, that's the only drop that I'm talking about. Um, if you're talking about energy on target, 338 obviously has way more energy, so it's a better, it's a better cartridge for killing stuff. Here's a Creedmoor, this guy right here. And here's a 260 rim. So not as aggressive of a shoulder on the 260. 65 Creedmoor is a little bit shorter so that you can load bullets longer and uh, have a shorter overall length. And what is this guy? 300 Win Mag. Uh, belted, pretty good size case length. The 30 cal, is that my Ultra Mag? Yeah, 300 Ultra Mag. So there's a Win Mag and an Ultra Mag side by side. That Ultra Mag has almost no case taper, whereas the Win Mag has a lot. So you're getting more powder all the way up, as well as the diameter of the base of the case is larger than the Win Mag, I believe. Um, so you're just gonna have more powder that you can stuff in here. So it's gonna be faster. I'm surprised the Ultra Mag isn't more popular than it is, especially because it is not a belted case. But I'll show you guys a couple bullets that I've got laying in here. These are just some cool like low drag projectiles. The uh, clear tips, a 338, is that right? No. Clear tips, a 225 grain ELD. This is a 285 grain ELD. And these are some solid 30 cals. Just like crazy high BC bullets, a lot of fun. But uh, that's pretty much it. I enjoy just looking at cartridges, comparing them and stuff, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Riley's saying any demand for pistol length rifle caliber barrels? Um, not yet. I think that's still pretty niche. Um, we're also going to be doing some pistol length rifle caliber stuff for Thompson Centers. Like, but that's kind of a normal thing on that side of the market. So hopefully we'll be building up a 6.5 Creedmoor pistols, a 6.5 Creedmoor pistol soon. And then uh, I want to go shoot that thing far. 
my hang up on that is I don't know what optic to go with for a, a pistol because I don't want to scope myself in the eye, but uh, I need some good adjustment or a good reticle. And I don't think any like two to seven pistol scopes offer either one of those. All right, let's see. What is the average foot per second for 338? Or can anyone answer my rookiness? Riley, what, uh... okay, so averages, thank you very much. You're already on that, I can tell. Um, averages between 2,700 and 2,800 for the Lapua, shooting a 300 grain bullet. But of course you can be, you can squeeze more out by hand loading. Um, yeah, I mean, I was 2,886 feet per second with a 300 grain in my edge. Riley's got a really cool 338 edge. He actually made his own stock for it, and I believe that's the rifle with the dark gray, like zebra stripe wood in it. Really pretty, and he did great work on that thing. I need a range about 50 miles offshore to shoot any of those. <laughs> yeah, just enough to get into international waters, you can start shooting those. So, yeah, Chico, that's all of Riley, man. I didn't do a whole lot there. I would have had to start Googling. Uh, another. Other guys really into the 338s are uh, Coates Brothers Firearms. They got a lot of good videos and they've got some awesome videos that are really popular as far as like 338 versus 6.5 Creedmoor at a thousand yards. And what I like about that is it's not like which one can shoot through a brick. It's like, no, what is the performance like downrange? That's what really matters. So really cool to see videos like that coming out of those guys. Let's see what else we got here, guys. Um, already talked about the loophole, that guy. Saw that video, it was quite a thump. Burris makes a three to 12 by 32 handgun scope. Might have to check into that. Um, see what we can do with that thing. I know I've seen quite a few two to sevens. I think they're Burris as well. So I have to ask the pistol guys what they do. Um, Chico, I appreciate that. Ask people to thumbs it up. Uh, always appreciated. But, yeah. Let's take a look here. So, Chico, what type of rifle would you be interested in picking up? What caliber would you want? I mean, like, for getting into long-range shooting, uh, I've got an idea of what you would say, but... I don't know, man. Let me know what you're let me know what you're thinking on that. So Bowtie Dooley says, "What dies are you using to reload six millimeter Creedmoor?" I actually need to buy my own. Um, my work has a couple that I've been borrowing on occasion. They are Redding, and they are the full length standard Redding die, and then the seating die. I was actually using a six by forty seven Lapua die with the competition seater. The shoulder is the same on the Creedmoor as the Lapua, so you can use the seating die to seat them down on there, and uh, it's getting them in there nice and straight, no problem at all. But I do need to get up my own set of dies, and I'll probably go with Redding, and just, I'll probably get a Type S bushing die for the six Creedmoor, and then I don't know if I'll do the competition seater die. I, a standard seating die is just fine for what I do. I I'm rarely swapping back and forth on bullets. So kind of once I have it set, it's set. Let's see. Just picked up some 112 match burners to reload my Hornady brass. Yeah, man, I got a bunch of Hornady brass. Uh, I don't know if I've even reloaded any of it though. Uh, I was able to get some ADG brass and six Creedmoor. You know, some of their factory seconds, some of their uh, little blends and stuff. So, but I've shot good grips with the Hornady. And that's what we shot our competition with, was with factory Hornady ammo. So I don't doubt that you'll be able to get good performance with that. Thoughts on 300 WSM. Been brainstorming the best short action North American game hunting cartridge. 300 WSM is getting real big on F class. That's uh, It's going to shoot a big heavy 30 cal, which is solid. It's a short action cartridge, which is good. Um, and it's just kind of like... Would you rather shoot a slightly lighter bullet faster with a seven mil, or would you go on a go with a heavier bullet with a 30 cal? Um, I know that I've seen a 375 Winchester short mag 
and that's MK machining. They have like a yellow zebra striped rifle. It's super cool. But man, I do not want to shoot that thing because it's lightweight, but shooting a 375 cal bullet, that'd be a nasty little round. It just depends how far you want to shoot it. Because I don't think the WSM is going to get a 375 going fast enough. I was considering I was considering buying a 338 Lapua Magnum Savage 110 BA. What do you think? Honestly, for the price, solid rifles. Um, 338 Lapua is a great long range shooting round. I can't deny that. Um, my question is, why do you want the 338? Uh, you're going to have more recoil. It's going to cost a lot in powder. The projectiles are not cheap. Um, and like I said, a seven song will outrun it. If you if you want to hunt elk long range, then I would then I would go yeah get the 338. If you just want to get a 338 so your friends can shoot it and whatnot, and everybody laughs and spends four dollars a shot, I get it. But I don't know. I just I haven't had a reason to get a 338, so that's why I'm a little hesitant to get one. Let's take a look. And I'm not trying to be rude to you at all. I mean, like I'm I'm legitimately just trying to ask why. What your reasoning is behind it and if your reason is because you want one that's enough reason for me do whatever you want man but as far as the rifle itself savage makes good stuff uh that's that's going to be the entry level into a 338 there's nicer ways to get them but for the cost i can't blame you and if it comes with the uh and if it comes with the chassis that's a that's an added bonus as well so so SVT asks, why doesn't AGG have small rifle? And I can tell you why. So I've, in talking with them in both, uh, just with what I do, as well as my work speaking with them, their interest is the Magnum cartridges. Like I just lined up the Ultra Mags, the Lapua Mag, uh, the Win Mag, the PRCs, the Psalms. That's what they. That's what their target market is, and so all of those have large rifle primers. So, like the Creedmoors are as small as they really want to get, because it's it's harder for them to be competitive. It's just such a saturated market when people can buy cheap horny brass. Um, it's hard to sell a more expensive product. So they kind of found their niche with the Magnum brass, and they don't want to go crazy big. They don't really want to do like the. 416 Barrett brass from what I've been told. So that's why they don't is because it would cost them a lot in tooling to do it. And for the majority of what they're doing and what they want to do, they don't care for the small primer. So if you want to get small primer brass, you can go other places, but uh, the large rifle primer is, it works. I mean, I get good SDs and whatnot. It just depends what you really want out of it. And I don't care to squeeze another 50 feet a second out of it. It's not going to make a huge difference for me. So let's scroll down. <laughs> um, Red Raider Reloading says, got to get this, got to fuel this rig up and go home. All right, dude, have a good night, man. We'll see you later, buddy. Uh, what about 7 millimeter 300 Norma improved? I know it's way overbore, but I'm wanting to build one for ELR, ULR. Man, that's, ugh. I don't know what powders you would use. That's, that's really overbore. Uh, because if you guys don't know, 300 Norma uses the Lapua bolt face and it shoots a 30 cal. So necking that down even smaller, is gonna be a lot of pressure back on that thing. But I mean, yeah, you should probably be able to get like 4,000 feet a second with a 180 grain. That'd be fun. <laughs> Here's my brother, 25 out six for the win. <laughs> Laughing because he knows why. Uh, let's take a look here. Where's my face? I don't know. Just felt like showing my hands. All the cool kids are doing it. Just ask Yanni. Um, I would love to hear you talk about the Kestrel with the Ford off solver and why you thought of it and what you thought of it. I didn't really use it. That was, uh, that was all, that was Riley on that one. So he was able to get his hands on a good ballistic solver like that. He originally, he 
was trying to get us both one, but honestly, it really wouldn't have benefited us. Uh, we, we did our ballistics the night before, and it did awesome. So I don't have a real answer for you other than Riley was tearing it up on course. I can tell you that. He was hitting his targets, so it's working. It, they work. Um, Ozark Spirit, what's going on, dude? Good to have you aboard. Uh, actually, just using some of your uh, Shake It On Everything seasonings the other night, so much appreciated. I greatly appreciate that, man. Riley says N570. I think he's referring to the powder you would use for the 7300 Norma. Probably so. That's a big, slow magnum powder from Vitavori. Uh, what's the deal with Target right now? It's missing in action. Um, I don't know. I think it depends where you're at. Uh, I know California's always had weird... Uh, there's a lot of people in California, and I don't know whether you live in like a busy part or not, but they're also real crappy about selling ammo and reloading supplies, so maybe that has something to do with it. I know that a lot of Hodgson stuff comes from Australia, so like it takes a while for the demand to get low enough that they're like, all right, we'll make a batch and then we'll ship it to the U.S. So I know that Hodgson's in Australia. Let's see. I really wanted to try them out, but wanted the small rifle primer stuff. Yeah, unfortunately, it's just not, and that's just not what I care to do. Um, let's see. You read it wrong. Where is your thing? What are you talking about? I read it wrong. Read it wrong. Read what wrong? 25 out of 6 for the win. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. I don't know what you're talking about. Slav Guns, what's going on, dude? Um, <laughs> hopefully you're uh, not slob squatting through the entire thing. Um, yeah, I haven't done a live stream in a while, but just figured I'd throw one out tonight. Mostly because, like, every night I get home, man, I just don't have two hours to go spend and talk to the computer for a while. <laughs> uh, what's a good long-range caliber, but also a good hunting caliber? 6.5 PRC does both. I would strongly agree with that. If you go back in the stream, that's pretty much what I said when I started talking about 6.5 PRC. <laughs> See you later, Austin. Um... I think guys are getting 33 to 3,400 feet per second with the 195 grain burgers and the seven millimeter 300 Norma. So yeah, man, I mean, how much more powder are you throwing in there to outrun a 28 Nosler or a seven run just to get a hundred feet more a second? And that's kind of like, it's the diminishing return. Like I've, I've done uh, ballistic calculations on 100 feet a second more and a 6.5 Creed more at like 2,500 yards. And it's almost nothing, man. Like it's it's falling fast at that point. It's just going to continue to fall fast. Uh, get a Charlie Terak. That'll get you farther than more velocity will. All right, sorry. I saw... Okay, 270 Winchester. 270 Winchester suffers the same way the most the suffers the same way 25 calibers do. They don't have good bullet selection for long range shooting. That being said, it's based off the 30 out six case, which uh, the 25 out six is as well. And uh, they're long action cartridges, which most people seem to be going away from nowadays. As well as it's got really bad taste caper, case taper, and. Uh, what that does when you fire it, it puts a lot of pressure on the bolt. It's really hard on the brass. The brass is trying to stretch really bad. Um, just the design of the OT6 cases and the 270 win and 25 OT6, it's not the ideal choice, man. Um, there are better cartridges to choose. As far as just a flat shooting deer killer, antelope killer, 270 win works awesome. Uh, It'll definitely do it, but if you're looking for long range shooting where you want good bullet selection to shoot far and uh, good efficiency, I don't think 270 win is your answer. Try to find a reloader 26 alternative. Oh man, I don't know. Uh, you can try that stay ball 6.5, but I don't know if you'll get good consistent velocities or not. I need to try some of that stuff. I'm getting great SDs on my hand loads with Varget and ELDs but the accuracy isn't there. 
Your SD is at six. Hmm. So that's always kind of a conundrum. You got to choose. It sounds like your rifle is going to give you one or the other. It's going to be accurate without good velocities or good velocities and not accurate. Uh, you could try different neck tension. That would be a good way to change that. Uh, accuracy. Make sure your rounds are straight. Uh, when I did a podcast with Vaughn Precision, I asked him what he thought the most, what made the biggest difference in accuracy, and he said concentricity. And the more I've gone along and learned about stuff, I think he's right. Uh, concentricity is a big deal. You got to get your round straight and put it in a straight chamber and shoot it straight towards your target. So that's that's important. Let's see. Two pounds of reloader 26. Yeah, man. People got way into reloader 26 just like they got way into 4350 and it disappears. People start panic buying it and buy everything they can and then no one else can get any. So, unfortunately, that's how it goes. Let's see. I'm in Las Vegas, can't find it anywhere. Uh, did I do a trust or go individual with my first can? I went individual just to save time and, uh, Hopefully I don't die anytime in the near future. But I don't know if anyone, like I really doubt that any one of my family members would really even want to take it outside of going on a shooting trip with me. So that's another reason why I really wasn't like pressured to go with the, uh, with the trust on the suppressor. <laughs> Maybe I'm just a crappy shot. Uh, I feel that way sometimes too, so don't worry. That's, that's you being humble. So that's, that's a good sign. Uh, that's a good, it's a good start. Six, five by 55 Swede hand load. Um, that's a wicked little cartridge. I think I'll get some good velocities. If I remember right, it's a weird length though. It's not quite a short action, but it's not quite a long action. It's a medium cartridge, which nowadays they make medium actions. So I don't know. That's an interesting one. Uh, but yeah, it'll shoot a 6.5 pretty fast. And I know that it, yeah, I, can't, I don't remember if Swede brass is readily available. I know that 284 is from like really nice brass manufacturers. So I'd look at component availability on that. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure those will outrun the Creedmoor and uh, the 6.547, stuff like that. I think I'm going to switch over to Reloader 26. I got the speed up 153s. Um, 6.5 Creedmoor or 300 Win Mag. That's, that's an interesting comparison there. Um, I'd say go 6.5 Creedmoor. You can hunt with it. You can hunt big game. You're just gonna be a little bit closer. Uh, Tons of factory ammo available. The rifle chamberings from factory rifles will shoot 6.5 Creed more better than they will shoot a 300 Win Mag, from my understanding. The uh, the tolerances of the SAMI spec on 300 Win Mag are kind of sloppy because it's a military cartridge. So like the 6.5 Creed more has tighter tolerances which help shoot it better. And that's one of the reasons why so many people have good luck with Creed more is a good good spec sheet on the chamber lit on the chamber for uh the 65 creed one chico says the three s's I'm not sure i follow you there chico so i might have to elaborate a little more yeah ozark says you can move it into a trust at any time i've i've heard that which is another reason why i did trust and then also um yeah, like they'll, they'll have to do their waiting period at that point, but I don't think it'll really matter to them as much. So I'll probably do it later. Uh, what's the scoop on large versus small primers? Nobody seems to talk about it in videos on here. Large versus small primers. Uh, man, I, I shoot large primers. I haven't had a whole lot of experience with small primers. Small primers is able to take the higher pressure compared to the large primers. So you're able to, you're able to 
ramp up your pressures and your primer pocket will still take it compared to the large primer. So you'll get a little bit higher velocity. That's really what it's all about. You're gonna get a little bit higher velocity and longer brass life with the small primers, typically. Um, I'm shooting the Swede out of a Swedish Mauser. Well, there you go. That takes care of your action problem, action length problem. Um, so you're just asking about reloading it or what? I guess I'm a little confused on what we're thinking here. Thoughts on 260 Remington coming back? Um, I don't think it is. And I don't know, maybe it might be. Uh, there's a couple cartridges out there that for some weird reason I have an attraction to. That, like I'm just drawn towards them and 260 is one of them. Whether it's just like the cool name, I don't know. But I've thought about building a 260 on multiple occasions. So I think if you're running a bolt gun where you have a little bit more uh, action length, maybe a 260, I mean, it'll outrun the Creedmoor. And so when it's so competitive to where it's like, oh, who, when everyone shows up with a Creedmoor and somebody shows up with a 260 and they're shooting faster and flatter, maybe that's their edge. So maybe people are realizing, oh, the 260 is faster, can give me an edge, maybe they'll go with that. So I don't know, man. Downside to a large rifle primer is the pocket itself gets loose sooner, so brass life sometimes isn't great. So yeah, SVT agrees pretty much what I said. Okay, so the three S's. Chico's getting back to me on that. Uh, what is happening? I think mine just skipped down like. Okay, there we go. Seat them straight, straight chamber, shoot them straight. <laughs> there you go. Uh, depends on the brand of brass for the primer pockets. I sacrifice speed in my 338s for temperature stability. Could go use US869 to get 300 graders going 3,000 feet a second, but I use H1000 instead, and between the two guns, average 2,800 FPS. So, yeah, I, I would do the same, especially where you hunt, where it's like rugged terrain, it gets real cold. I'd take temperature stability for sure. Nemo Arms, 6.5 Creedmoor. I already have a 338 Lapua mag, semi-automatic from DRD Tactical. Thank you for answering. Not a problem. Hola Taco, what's going on, dude? Good to have you here, Mike. SBT, that makes sense. Is there any performance gain over for small over large? Yeah, you're gonna get a little bit more speed, a little bit longer brass life. Um, you can move to the trust, but you pay another two hundred dollars stamp, and I did, I did know that going in as well. So it is what it is. But I heard that I could get my cans sooner, as well as you got to pay to have a contract, like write the trust up, and like it just cost more initially, and it was potentially going to take longer. So I just went with the on the solo on that one. Um, if anybody knows about getting spreaders, it's probably full at Taco. All right, man, just got your Q full Nelson. I know you've been waiting on that one for a while because I've been asking you about what you thought of the Q suppressors a while back and you just told me that you bought one. So glad you got that. I'm definitely curious to hear what you think of it. Uh, yeah, if you guys have silencer questions or subsonic questions, uh, Full Head Taco, he's gonna have some, he's gonna have more knowledge than I would. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Slav Guns is talking about the cool name and why I'm uh, addict, why I'm attracted to the 260. And he's saying, yeah, the 224 Valkyrie, the 338 Enabler. Um, I think it's funny. A lot of people are like, oh, the 224 Valkyrie, it's such a cool name. And I was literally just, I just kind of didn't care. Like, uh, you went to, had just come out with their UPR 15, and the 224 Valkyrie was brand new at the same time. I figured it was a good way to get some extra attention on the Uintas. At the same time, I got to try the new Valkyrie, so kind of a win for everybody on that. I uh, found a great node with both large rifle primer and small rifle primer. The large rifle primer wore out quickly, so I switched to small rifle primer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just used that 300 black Encore pistol barrel this weekend for match grade machine. Worked great for a women's range day shooting activity. Absolutely, dude. That sounds like a really good one. Um, I don't remember exactly what we did on that. Was that like a really short barrel? Or how did that go? Was that 16 or 10 or something? 
I do remember your 300 black barrel though. Dang. ELC just dropped some money on a couple battle rifles. A couple good names there. LWRC and POF. It's funny, I've been so out of the AR-15 world. Like, you first get into it and you're like, oh man, these are so cool and these are so cool. And then like, I kind of straight away went to bolt guns for a while and like my interest in them just plummeted. Like every AR is just an AR to me. So I don't know, people would ask me what AR I suggest and I just didn't have an answer because I just personally, I didn't really care that much. So let's see. I think I'm going to reload my Hornady brass to start with to try and get my loads figured out. Then I'll order up some Lapua brass. Uh, you got to get the special decapping pin for the Lapua brass. So try not to ruin your Lapua brass as soon as you get it. Just so you know, it takes that small decapping pin to get it out of there. Best intermediate small frame AR cartridge, Wildcats included. I just found out about the 30 ARX. I can tell you this already. The, uh, the fact that it's a 30 cal and such a short cartridge, I really doubt that it's going to outperform like the 6.5 Grendel and whatnot, just because the bullet weight, the amount of powder you have, um, the 224 Valkyrie. I think the Valkyrie, if I were to label them out, Valkyrie, 223, Grendel, because the Valkyrie shoots the heaviest bullets at a good speed, good BC. The 223 will shoot a decent BC really fast because it's a 77 grain, so it's lighter and faster to shoot. The Grendel is basically a 308, is really what you want to consider it. Uh, for the weight bullets you can fit in the AR-15 and the velocities you're getting, it's pretty much 308, which is funny because I really don't care for 308. Out, like I don't have a 308 anything. So, what are your thoughts? Um, Conversation keeps jumping. Uh, what are your thoughts on 300 PRC? Will it kill 300 Win Mag? Nope. Just like 6.5 Creedmoor hasn't completely killed 260 Remington, but even more so because, okay, there, there's a better comparison. It's the same way that 6.5 Creedmoor hasn't killed 308. 308 is a military cartridge. As everybody says, oh, let's find it all around the world. That's uh, true. Um, it's just super standardized, easy to get everywhere. Um, no, 300 PRC will never kill 300 Win Mag, but it's definitely possible to shoot better and achieve similar velocities with better bullets. So, there you go. If you set down a 300 PRC or a 300 Win Mag in front of me, I'm taking the PRC. 224 WSSM, uh, you gotta get the right bolt face for that to go on an AR-15, which is gonna be hard to do. Uh, 12 inch 300 blackout for full head taco. With an EO tech on top. Man, that's such a cool combination. That'd be fun. How much have you used the 112 match graders? I thought I saw you were going to hunt with them. Have you loaded it up much with them? Anyone else watching used any yet? So I think I've shot through 40 or 50 of them now. Uh, did some target practice. They shot really well. Uh, low development. They shot fine. I don't have a ton of experience with them, but I'm... I need to get out and do a, a monthly PRS match out here and then see how they do. Um, with six Creedmoor, you got to watch how much load development you do because your barrel life is pretty limited. So it's kind of just load and shoot. Uh, SBT did a trust, $99 to have a trust done by an eternity. It was easy. This can took seven months to get the stamp back. Uh, it felt like an eternal wait. <laughs> Yeah, I'm legitimately expecting 11 months minimum. So I'm telling myself next Christmas I'll have a can. 243 WSSM. I've heard those are just crazy barrel burners and they have a really high pressure. So you just gotta watch out for that. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the Revolution, the same size as an AR-15, but shoots 308. Okay. I don't know. JRB did a series on large primers. Man, my freaking chat keeps like jumping and all of a sudden I lose where I'm at. Uh, 
JRB did a whole series on large versus small primers and 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, 224 Grendel. Ooh, that's a pretty sick round. That's a That would probably be the top long range cartridge for an AR-15. Um, <laughs> all right, Chico, we'll see you later, man. Yeah, you're a couple hours ahead of me already, so it's pretty late where you're at. What does an AR-15 bolt face look like with a Magnum cartridge? I don't think there is a bolt face with a Magnum cartridge at that point. Um, I know that Uinta has done a prototype Magnum cartridge in an AR-10, and they don't like doing that. So I don't think you can in an AR-15. Six Grendel in an AR-15. Six Grendel, super cool. I like the six Grendel. Um, I wish I had one. When Mag is here to stay, too much history. That's what I'm saying. My can took 13 months. Uh, have one I'm waiting for on for nine months currently. That's rough, dude. That, but you got yours and you went through that whole government shutdown stuff. So hopefully this year it doesn't shut down. It probably will because our government doesn't know how to work. Um, six Grendel, six millimeter AR. Yeah. And then you can do the six millimeter Grendel. Uh, turbo, which is the 40 degree shoulder on there as well. So, whoops. Let's take a look. All right, guys, I think that uh, time to start rounding this up. We'll kill this one here in a minute. Uh, took the form four of my truss for my suppressor, picked up today, it was about 12 months. Hi from Washington. What's going on, Nick J? 12 months on the trust for spread. Uh, uh. Man, I hate to have that. Still waiting on about seven more tax stamps. Well, hopefully you bought them a little bit spaced out. So slowly you'll start getting one here and there. Um, if you bought all seven at once, that's a, that's a real bummer but you're gonna have one heck of a good day when they all come through. So. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Uh, I don't know what I would do though. If I, I need one more can for a pistol. So I got the CZ P07 here. Yeah, I run it hot, it's a carry gun. Um, so. Yeah, so this one's got the suppressor high sights, um, and it's got the threaded barrel out front, half 28. Uh, I really want to get a can for this because it's set up for a can. Um, my work has a hybrid 46 that I've been able to use, uh, obviously with the owner of the can. And I've been really impressed with its performance on center fire rifles. Uh, I was able to try it on a nine millimeter and it worked really well. It was nice and quiet. And just overall, I was impressed with the performance of like a universal can. Uh, I thought that it was going to be like, oh, this thing's not good at anything. When in reality, it's kind of good at all things. The Hybrid 46 is a really sweet can. I do like the modularity of the new one that they did, but that's only up to nine millimeter. And so my question is, do I go with a Hybrid 46 so that I can go all the way up to 45 cal if necessary? But currently, I don't own anything bigger than 9mm. So, kind of up in the air about that. And, like, I'm not real sad if I can't shoot all of my pistols suppressed. But, uh, I don't know. I definitely want to have a suppressor for this one. Once I get a rifle can, I don't, need a, I don't know if I need a silenced pistol, other than just the fun fact of having a silenced pistol. Like, uh, going and shooting... Like, I'll use a rifle can for home defense at that point. Like, I'll throw that thing on an AK with a red dot. Uh, don't come in my house at night. There you go. But this would be a lot more maneuverable with a can on it, as well as just fun. So, cheaper to shoot. So, I don't know. Let's we'll see how that goes. So, let's see. Okay, let's try not to shoot my computer. Stack this bad boy back up. It's plus one. There we go. All right. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, space them out every couple of months. So that's good. That'll help. Uh, great work from the Great White North. Thanks, Mantis. Um, it looks like Christmas every couple of months. How about a 22 CRDM for the heavier bullets? Oh, 22 Creedmoor. So Creedmoor will not fit in the AR-15. I don't know if you're referring to that, but overall, 22 Creedmoor is a cool cartridge. Um, it's a really fast 22 cal. There's already been a lot of 22, like really fast 22 cals. What the Creedmoor has really specialized in is people using the Creedmoor case to shoot the heavy for the caliber bullets. So in the six fives, it's always been designed to shoot the heavy six fives. In the six mils, it's been designed to shoot the heavy six mils. And it's the same story with the 22. People are shooting the 95 grain Sierras out of them, which is great. Like that's what I like to do. So I think that's why the Creedmoors are so popular is you're just getting good long range performance with every single variation that they do. So our shop has been seeing stamps back in three to four months. A coworker got his SBR form one in three weeks. Ugh. So I went fill out the paperwork at my at my uh, class three FFL. That guy was telling me, oh yeah, people are getting their stamps back in like three months. And then I talked to OSS. OSS said that they trained a bunch of people at the ATF and when they were training them, they literally grabbed like right in the middle of the waiting stack and just like grab a chunk and then they trained the people on how to do it with those so people who had been they would not been waiting very long all of a sudden just got their stuff back because they trained people how to go through the paperwork and they were lucky enough to be part of those chosen few so that was the story i got from oss so i think that's more of the truth a couple people got really lucky and then i think from now on you're really not going to hear that anymore it's just going to be a bunch of long waits again but I'm not sure I don't work for the ATF. Um, only downside of the hybrid 46 is the accessories. You'll spend a ton on accessories, thread adapters, boosters. Really only need one. I mean, half 28 booster and then direct thread five eighths, which, yeah, I don't know. You guys at my work have a lot of accessories, but I don't know if they would be willing to let me use them. <laughs> so uh, I've been thinking about getting a 308 just because, well, just because. Nothing wrong with that, man. It's cheap ammo, you can get good stuff, and they do shoot far. You can, it's like a 223. It's not great at shooting far. That's why it's fun to shoot far. Um, would you recommend the new Arc and Scope? I can't yet because I don't know if it works yet. I will definitely let you guys know as soon as I can on the Arkin. Um, uh, here in the state of California, my carry gun can only be a water gun. Yeah, that sucks, man. I have a CCW in California. It depends on what county you're in. And that's a big thing. I've really been trying not to bash on people from California. Um, a lot of the people I follow on Instagram are a bunch of badass long range shooters and they're from California. Like you can't just assume because the people in the big city that make the stupid laws that everyone in California is stupid. That's not true at all. So there's good people in California. I wish that they had better laws so that they could uh, enjoy things like this a little bit more. So I'm with you guys in California. I feel bad for you. Uh, big Al's out. Have a good one, dude. Just filled out my CCW here in Riverside County. Nice, more people with guns is always good. Uh, have you heard about the Arkin line of scopes? Have I heard about them? Ugh. Yeah, I've got my Arkin sitting right here. I have not used it yet, but at the beginning of the stream, I talked a lot about it. Real quick, 34 millimeter tube, First focal plane, this one is four to 16, but they have a six to 24 option coming soon. I'm quite confident they'll have a MOA version coming soon as well. This one is nil nil. Um, now they don't have yardage marks marked on the, uh, on the parallax, which Rex Reviews talked about. He's like, yeah, you can't really know. But at the same time, if you're shooting competition, 
you're going to want some type of marking to get it close. It, it would help out for sure. So I may end up taking this off and laser etching where I think 50 or 100. Like I'll mark with a Sharpie when I go out and check some different ranges. But uh, that would be nice to have is like a good guess on numbers. So, but first focal plane, the clicks are good. Uh, it has a zero stop. That's another, that's another big feature I forgot to mention. It's got a zero stop. So super solid. Um, the clicks on the side on the windage do not feel the same as the elevation, but I'll get into that more as things go. But I just want to go out and try it and before I start saying do or don't. So I'm going to go shoot the thing first. Baxter Riley's out. So later, dude. I'm going to go play some news and catch some Z's. Yeah. Cool story, nerd. Uh, can you legally switch a suppressor from one gun to another? Yeah. So it's not about what gun it's on. It's about who owns it. I can't hand it to my brother and my brother can't take it away from me. And if he goes out and shoots it, that's a felony. That's big trouble there. Uh, you don't want to do that. So unless you have them on a trust. So I, I don't know. I don't want to give out legal advice or anything. Uh, don't take anyone else's suppressor, um, even if they say it's all right. Don't do that. Um, pretty much that's how it goes. Just if they're standing right there watching you, you can try it out. Um, yeah, they can take it off their 300 blackout and put it on their other stuff. That's why they have the, the, the like Silencer Co. has uh, suppressors that can switch between different pistols, rifles, whatever. And uh, I mean, other brands have that too. I'm just using Silencer Co. as an example. Like my OSS is a 338. I can use it on my 22, 6 mil, 30 cal, 7 mil, and a 338. No problem at all. 22 LR. But trust is a favorable way to do it. All right, guys. My voice is done. I think I'm going to take off, but it's been fun hanging out. Just kind of BSing. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully, we'll see you guys in some videos in the future. Uh, very soon. You guys will be seeing some more content on the Arkin EP4 34 millimeter scope, first focal plane, zero stop. Uh, we'll see how that thing goes. Precision tracking guaranteed. We're going to find out. See you guys.